All right, we just finished our final compositing raster project, which was animation. Now it is time to learn the second type of digital imaging, digital art, after compositing, and that is vector graphics, right? We've played a little bit with vector graphics with exercise two. Now we're going to use real vector creation programs, and we're going to use it in the way that vectors are most advantageously used, which is for branding and logo design. So you will find this project under unit modules, and it's going to be unit nine. Notice we just finished unit seven. In between unit seven and unit nine is unit eight. That makes sense. That's for your group presentations. Your group presentations are still happening. You're still figuring out. You're still putting them together. We're going to talk more about them next week. They're what we do on Monday when we come back from spring break. All right. So they're not even two weeks away. That's when you'll actually present in class. And this will be the project we're working on through next week. I, I built this during the pandemic, so I have some nice pandemic-inspired logo variations there. <clears throat> in this unit, we have a question of the day to start it off. And this will be due by March 4th, which, believe it or not, is our next class. Right. So that's Monday. But this is an important question of the day to look at and to remind yourself the difference between raster based images and vector based images. Right. And for background on that, as well as the introduction to the course slides, you know, the intro to digital art, I give you these slides, which kind of go into it in depth, including this student created video that explains the difference between a vector and a raster image and kind of the history and uses of them. That leads us to logos. We're going to be designing what's called a pictorial logo for this project for assignment four. And that logo can be on any theme you like, but it needs to be first a black shape logo. A black shape logo is like the CBS one here or the Nike one here or the USA one here. It needs to just be black shapes on any background, and that needs to work. So it's, think of it as just cut out of black paper. Then we're going to be adding a color variation to it, right? Now I say you can pick any theme you want, but I'll also have one that I suggest. So if we look at the project, the first step of assignment four is actually sketching to get a refined sketch for your idea. But once you have a refined sketch, you'll submit that, you'll submit your black shape vector, and then you'll submit a color version of that black shape vector. So here are some different examples. Sometimes logos are pretty complicated with a lot of complex shapes. Sometimes they're incredibly simple. It just depends what you're going for. But they're always gonna be clean at any scale because they're going to be a vector. You can see other past examples here. You can log into Imgur through the links to get to the class Imgur login. Please don't make any of them public. So this is actually a nice one to start with. So you can see in the sketch, this was for an Earth Day project. Earth Day is very subtly in the veins of the sketch. And Earth Day is actually even more subtly <laughs> in the vector. But it's a nice combination of a really strong graphic with a lot of subtlety, right? Here we have another Earth Day one, black shape, then with color added. Another one, black shape, this was not for Earth Day, then with color added. And I'm going to ask you guys not to do type design with this. We're not going to do logo types or combine marks. We're just going to do the pictorial logo for this one. We'll be doing type design soon. And then this one, right? This butterfly. Now, this, this is the kind of sketching you're required to do before next class. And that is actually this next step. To get to your refined sketch, you don't have to get there right away. You don't just need to come to class with a perfect sketch for your logo. Instead, you want to have an idea and then I'm going to force you through proving ground number two, right, to earn your creative problem solving badge. I want you to force yourself in divergent and convergent thinking. 
which means you're going to take the idea, like I want to do a logo of a butterfly, and you're going to force yourself to do it in three different approaches. Those three different approaches are in this same slide presentation. They are central symmetrical, which these logos all use. It means they grow from the middle out. They don't need to be perfectly symmetrical. Like notice the NBC peacock, the colors aren't matching side to side, and the peacock's beak goes to one side, but it still clearly is balanced from the middle out, right? So that is a central symmetrical approach. The most symmetrical central logo ever is Target's logo, right? You can't beat that for central symmetrical. The second approach you're going to sketch is dynamic. Dynamic is kind of, in many ways, the opposite of central symmetrical. The eye is not meant to get stuck in the middle of it like a target. It's meant to flow across it. And it usually does that at speed. So you want to avoid horizontals and verticals. You want to prioritize diagonals and, and curves. So we have some examples of dynamic logos. And then kind of a subset, which is fun to force yourself to think about. This is the divergent thinking. Is to play with positive and negative space. So let's look at these black shape logos. The, M the CBS I logo, very clearly central symmetrical. The Nike swoosh, very clearly dynamic, right? The USA logo, how, what would you call this? It's not quite central symmetrical. It's not quite dynamic. But what makes it engaging is that with the empty space around the black shapes, they, they make that into content. So the, the S is made in the empty space. So that is what's called a play with positive and negative space. Just like the, the giraffe and the rhinoceros are made by the shape of the elephant. Just like the, the portrait of the man and woman are made by the shape of the heart, right? Just like the skyline of the city is made by the key. And I include the World Wildlife uh, Foundation's logo here just because the white space is so important to that logo, right? It's kind of activated and left open. So let's say your theme was to redesign our college mascot and turn it into a logo, right? This would be three ways you could sketch that. Nico the Nighthawk. So central symmetrical, dynamic, play of positive and negative space. Then that is proving ground number two. You'll post those sketches. You'll give your input to another student on what your favorite is. Then you'll choose your favorite and you'll use that to make your refined sketch. So in this example, I chose my dynamic and refined it as a sketch that then, this is still just all sketching, then I can use vector software to make really clean as a finished logo. So we have some time for this, but our proving ground is due by next class. So this was for this idea, right? of forking bull, you know, barbecue, central symmetrical, dynamic, play with positive and negative space. It can get pretty abstracted here where I have a fork as positive space making a bull in the negative space. This is the rubric for that proving ground. And here is your suggested theme and we are almost done. Your suggested theme is a spirit animal vector. So if you don't have a Another idea for a logo you want to do, think of you're designing a tattoo for yourself of your spirit animal, right? That tattoo could be minimal, that tattoo can be really decorative, but it needs to be just a clean black shape. And if I decide my tattoo is a feathered, or my spirit animal is a feathered serpent, right? This one kind of looks like a, a chicken serpent. These are my inspirations. And Feathered Serpent is my Mayan initial, my K for my name. So Feathered Serpent is my Mayan spirit animal, which is a pretty good one. So I might go with it. It would be a good tattoo. So I need to sketch, and I haven't done this yet, a central symmetrical version of that idea of a Feathered Serpent. Just like this, a central symmetrical version of a Feathered Serpent. A dynamic version of the Feathered Serpent and a play of positive and negative space for my feathered serpent. And then I'll be done. All right.